Good to be with you all this week, as always. Great way to start the week. Uh, this is a story, our gospel reading is another story from Easter night. Now, there's lots of stories in the gospel. Almost all of our gospels give an Easter night story, and they all tell different parts of it. So you got to remember the gospel writers are trying to write brief. So they don't have a laptop that they can write 20,000 words on. They've got a scroll. And so they've only got so much space, and any time it gets repeated, it has to be hand-copied. So in their world, you just uh, wrote brief accounts of things just for, uh, for the fact that you just couldn't reproduce uh, long accounts. And so everybody tells different parts of that story. Last week, we read about Doubting Thomas. That was part of the Easter night story, the Doubting Thomas story. Um, Luke tells a different part, and he includes this detail that seems like, why is that in there? But I love it. It's such a great part of this story. Jesus appears to the disciples. They're not quite sure what to make of him, and he says, do you got any food? And they give him a piece of fish, and he eats. It's kind of like a college kid coming home, right? Like, what's to eat? Do you got any food? Uh, Jesus eats with them, and that's such a neat part of the story uh, for so many reasons. Uh, Luke thought it was important because it says something about resurrection and Jesus and how he was after Easter, and it gives us hope about what eternal life looks like. And so I want to say a few things about uh, resurrection and this story, what, the, what Jesus eating fish might tell us. Uh, and it, I want to say uh, three things and then talk about hope. So the first is it, that it shows resurrection is real. Now, this should be like our starting point. I assume we're all here going to church on a Sunday morning because we believe that Jesus rose, right? Paul wrote to the first generation of Christians, if we don't, if we don't believe Jesus rose, what are we doing? Right, everything else is good, but what are we doing? Uh, because we believe Jesus rose, but it, but it just needs to be said because I've met other pastors in the church that don't believe that. I've met people that say, you know, maybe it was just kind of a spirit, maybe like a force ghost. I get I'm I'm talking in a nerd language that only a few people here are going to understand. But if you're a Star Wars fan, right, like what if Jesus was like a force ghost, right? He kind of wasn't really there, but you could kind of see him a little bit. Uh, And the disciples wanted you to know that when they saw Jesus, it was really Jesus. Like you could see him. There was a substance to him. It wasn't just a phantom It wasn't a ball of light. It wasn't like a a see-through ghost. Like there was a substance to him. And Jesus even says that, look, it's me. Like a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones. Give me some fish. Ghosts don't eat fish. You will never find a story of a ghost eating fish. Of all the shows you might watch about haunted things, none have ever said, and the ghost came and ate a filet of fish sandwich on my kitchen table. They don't happen. Ghosts don't eat fish. Jesus is proving a point. It's not that he just really wanted fish. It's he's trying to prove something to them that it's real. That eternal life, life beyond death is real. It's not just kind of like this uh, phantom zone, right? It's real. And he's real. And he wanted to show the disciples that. That's why he ate fish with them. It's real. So that's the first thing. It It just needs to be said. The resurrection is real. Life, eternal life after death is real. It's also recognizable, which is a great comfort. I think should be a great comfort for us because Jesus, even though he is the Lord of creation, he's uh, risen, he's recognizable. There's something beautiful about Jesus being different yet still being Jesus. Like He's like, you know me. It's me. Look and see, like you can recognize me. Look at my hands and my feet. And he says that because he has nail, the nail holes in his hands and his feet. Like of all the things for Jesus to keep. But he has them so that they can see. I was the one who was crucified, but I'm alive. And I'd like to think like when we uh, see loved ones or when we might be recognizable in eternal life, uh, there's that same idea. Like, look, it's me. Like, you can recognize me. This is, this is kind of the marks from the life I lived on earth, but it's not. They don't cause Jesus any pain. They're not marks of him being a victim. 
it's just yeah this is me um he's in glory now but he's still so recognizable and what a what a beautiful uh, hope that is for us as we think about maybe loved ones that aren't here anymore that there's this recognizableness to eternal life that jesus is so uh, he wants the disciples to see him it's not like it's a mystery they have to solve he wants the disciples to know it's me it's jesus the person you knew it's st is still alive it's not some ghost somewhere it's jesus it's real he's real and he's recognizable i think that's a beautiful hope for us and then um the third i want to say is that life eternal life in the resurrection is abundant life it's uh it's a, this but greater okay let me explain uh what i'm trying to get at there is a thought that like when we think about life on earth we think about the fun things we get to do and the things that bring us joy or maybe the relationships that fill us with love or just the foods we like to eat maybe that's just me but uh, the foods we like to eat or other things like that and then when you think about heaven it just feels kind of boring right like what do you do it's just are you like a ball of light you just bounce around forever i don't know what what goes on up there and so there's this idea that like the fun stuff is life lived here and and some of that stuff is just feels so boring and there was a great movie uh i was in san marcos earlier this year and got to see green hall first time i've been there green hall up up in that area where uh scenes from the movie michael were filmed with john travolta it's a 30 year old movie so if i spoil the plot i really don't feel bad about it it's 30 years old but the movie michael with john travolta part of it was filmed in in green hall and if you've ever seen the movie michael it's about an angel it's michael the archangel and he comes down to earth and he comes down to earth basically because earth is where all the fun is right there's things like sugar and desserts and pie and cigarettes and dancing and all the stuff that he loves coming down to earth steak and all the things he loves about earth because he's like they don't have anything like this in him like that is a great movie it is terrible to base your thoughts on heaven on that movie terrible theology great great acting terrible theology what jesus is trying to show is like life is abundant it's this but more it's not less than this it's all the great things about this life but more right when jesus is there it's still him he still has relationships he can he still eats fish he still has those those bonds of affection with his disciples like none of that's gone for jesus in eternal life it's just more and life uh after death eternal life in the resurrection is not less than jesus calls it abundant life it's more than it, that that kind of boring idea of clouds and just balls of light or whatever we might think it is i don't know where that came from but when the scriptures talk about the new heaven and the new earth they talk about color and creation and mountains and rivers and animals and people and peace and love and justice and joy they don't just say you're a ball of light sitting in kind of nothing there's this world that's even more than what we live in now and jesus is just coming to show the disciples that that the relationships are there and uh the bonding and the love is there and maybe the fish are there i don't know i would hope the menu has a little bit more than broiled fish but who knows but it's more than not less than and that's hope for us this is where i want to end the early christians thought about easter and it gave them such hope in the midst of life it gave them such hope that there's a life that's that's more than our struggles here it doesn't mean that that we don't take joy in this life and do the very best with the time we've been given but we just understand that there's a place that's more than so when they struggled with disease and sickness and illness especially with loved ones that seemed like they were living less than what they should hear they took hope that there was a place that was more than an abundant place that was coming when they thought about um 
losing loved ones and, and being separated from people they love by death, they took joy in the recognizable eternal life that Jesus shows us. That there's a place where there's a reunion and it's more than, not less than the time we had here. And when they thought about the brokenness of all this world and that weighs heavy on our hearts, you think about our nation or the world or the Middle East or just the stories that weigh on us. And we wonder like, Lord, is this ever gonna get straightened out? And will there ever be peace? Will there ever be a time when we can just put the conflict down? They took hope in the thought that there was a place where life was more than anger and hatred, more than war and violence. It's not less than this, it's more than. And so it's just a helpful reminder in Easter season the hope that the resurrection brings. It is not meant in any way to take away from the life we live, the joy, the love that we can share here on earth, but to understand that, that Jesus' intention is that that doesn't end, it continues in a place that's more than. And sometimes that's what we need to get us through the sorrows and the heavy hearts of losing people we love or having people we love suffer with illnesses that debilitate or just being overwhelmed by the grief and the sadness. Easter calls us to hope in a life that's more than. It can start now and it doesn't end. It just continues. Hope in the life that's more than. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.